Treponema pallidum. It's a spiral rod, which means it is spiral in shape, just like that. Here you can see its spiral shape, this one. It is thin-walled, and as I said, it's a spirochete. Spirochete are a group of bacteria which are long and thin and contain endoflagella, which is a band of protein filaments coiled within these spirochetes and give them a spirally shape, just like the curly french fry. Endoflagella also helps parakeets move around by spinning or twisting. That's why I've written the word motile here. Treponema pallidum is obligate bacterium. Why? Because it cannot live outside certain environment like human beings and it is responsible for causing syphilis that is sexually transmitted disease. Treponema pallidum affects skin and mucous membranes of external genitalia and also mouth. Assalamu alaikum everybody, welcome back to another episode of Bacteriology series. We are almost at the end of this series and I'm super excited for the upcoming series like the mycology and immunology. Today we are going to talk about Treponema pallidum, that is parakeet. But before getting into the lecture, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for education. Things and treatments may change over time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comments section. Have a cup of tea and let's get started. Spirochetes not only include treponemas, but they also include Brevilia and Leptospera. We'll be talking about them in the upcoming videos. But before getting into much detail of Treponema pallidum, we should know about the bacterial classification. Bacteria are further subclassified into spirochetes, the topic of today's video, also into acid fast, we're done with them, into gram positive and negative, we're done with them, and also into mycoplasma, we're also done with them. If you've missed all those videos, be sure to check out the channel. Lecture outline, we are done with the introduction of Treponema pallidum. We've also looked into the bacterial classification now. We'll be talking about morphology, habitat in transmission, pathogenesis, and clinical findings. I'll not talk about clinical findings in a separate slide, I'll include them in pathogenesis. Then we'll look at the lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Treponema pallidum is a spiral rod, as we've discussed earlier, it is 0.2 micrometers in diameter. And you know what? Spirochetes move using endoflagella, that's also called axial filaments, which are located within the periplasmic space, that's the space between membranes. And this flagella causes the entire cell to rotate and undulate in a unique twisting corkscrew-like motion, which causes them to move forward. Antigens. There are certain group-specific antigens which are found in all treponemas. There is a species-specific antigen that is found in treponema pallidum, and there's a cardiolipin. lipin which is a lipid antigen and is found in spirochetes and amazingly in the cells in human body. Structure. As this bacterium is gram-negative, so it has got two membranes and its outer membrane lacks lipopolysaccharides and there are few exposed surface protein. Treponema pallidum has a cell wall but that is thin. It also has endoflagella that is band of protein filaments called within these spirochetes and this Endoflagella helps the treponema pallidum move by spinning or twisting. Habitate. Hosts are humans and there's no animal reservoir. Transmission. Treponema pallidum is transmitted from spirochete containing lesions of skin or mucous membranes. And these lesions are filled with spirochetes. And they're transmitted from an infected person to other person by intimate contact. And it can also be transferred from pregnant women to the fetus. Rarely, blood for transfusions collected during early syphilis is also infectious. Let's talk about its type and their transmission. There are two types of syphilis. One is echoid and one is congenital. As the name shows that, congenital will be transferred from mother to baby during gestation in uterus or during birth through vagina. And if we look at echoid syphilis, Treponema pallidum enters via body fluids through cuts and breaks in skin or mucous membranes, sexual contact, whether oral, anal or vaginal, 
contaminated needles, and direct contact with a skin lesion. And these lesions are filled with parakeets. There are certain risk factors of syphilis. Homosexual males, individuals with multiple partners, previous HIV infection, developing countries because of their poor hygiene, and poor healthcare areas. Pathogenesis. Treponema pallidum infects endothelium of small blood vessels, causing and arteritis. We'll be talking about that in detail in just a moment. Syphilis causes spectrum of sexually transmitted diseases. There are two types of syphilis, as we've discussed earlier. Echoid is further classified into primary syphilis, secondary syphilis, and tertiary syphilis. Let's first talk about primary syphilis, that is early localized stage. This stage occurs one to three weeks after treponema pallidum lands on skin or mucous membrane. These parakeets multiply at the site of inoculation, and local, non-tender, painless ulcer forms within 2 to 10 weeks and this ulcer is called syphilitic chancre. If we talk about patients having the history of HIV, they'll have multiple chancres. When these parakeets destroy the tissue, they form syphilitic chancre. These chancres or ulcers have a hard base, raised borders and they have fluid which is rich in parakeets which can spread to other body parts or other individuals. These ulcers heal spontaneously but if they don't, and they spread to lymph, they'll cause lymphadenopathy, and if they spread to blood, they'll cause bacteremia. Primary syphilis can be memorized with painless, cause the chancres are painless. When the transfer occurs through sexual contact, primary chancre will be formed on external genitalia. And if the transmission was through physical touch or other way, the primary chancre will be formed in hands or other body parts. And blood for transfusions collected during early syphilis is also infectious. Now let's talk about the secondary syphilis that is the disseminated stage. That occurs after the disappearance of the chancre and lesions in that stage occur three months later. And this stage occurs after six to 12 weeks of infection. When parakeets enter the blood, they cause parakeetemia and they also cause generalized lymphadenopathy. The treponema pallidum attaches to the walls of blood vessel, causes non-itchy maculopapular vash, which are small bumps flatter raised. First they start on trunk and then they spread to arms and palms, legs and soles, genitalia and other mucous membranes. These lesions appear as maculopapular rash on palms and soles, moist papules on skin and mucous membranes. Rashes can be pustula, which are filled with white fluid, or papulous cramus, which are scaly and hard. And these lesions are full of spirochetes. Later, condylomatolata are formed. Condylomatolata are smooth, white, painless wart-like lesions on genitals, anal region, and armpits. These lesions are rich in spirochetes and are highly infectious, but they also heal spontaneously. Patchy alopecia also occurs. Constitutional symptoms like low-grade fever, malaise, anorexia, weight loss, headache, myalgias and generalized lymphadenopathy also occurs in secondary syphilis. Secondary syphilis is the most infectious stage of all stages of syphilis. Rashes usually resolve within a few weeks to months. Certain systemic symptoms like pharyngitis, meningitis, nephritis and hepatitis may occur. Now let's talk about the third stage or phase, that is latent phase. Disease enters its dormant or asymptomatic phase. If the primary and secondary syphilis are untreated, a latent phase may occur. Spirochetes and capillaries of organs and tissues are found. The latent period can be divided into early and late stages. An early latent period which can last for one or two years after the secondary stage. The symptoms of secondary syphilis can reappear and patients can infect others. And in this stage, these parakeets, the treponema pallidum, are present in blood. In the late latent period, which can last for many years, no symptoms occur and patients are not infections. But in this stage, sparakeets are present in organs and tissues. Serologic testing will be positive. Few sparakeets are present in blood. Severe immune response will occur and that will be the beginning of tertiary stage. Tertiary syphilis occurs months to years later after exposure. If there are few sparakeets in blood, there will be severe immune response, which will be led by T-cells and macrophages. They will release certain cytokines like tumor necrosis factor alpha, 
interleukin-1 and interleukin-6. This immune response is called type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. And there will be certain symptoms like swelling, edema, redness, warmth, and fever. Plasma cells like to get involved in the process so they form antibodies against the antigens. We've talked about the antigens in morphology section. Antigens are group-specific antigens that are specific to all the treponemas, species-specific antigens that are specific to treponema pallidum, and cardiolipin. These are found in spirochetes and cells in our bodies. Immune cells also form granulomatous lesions that is called gamma, that is the chronic granuloma, which is surrounded by various immune cells and fibroblasts. So the tissue inside does not get oxygen and dies, which results in coagulative necrosis. Tertiary syphilis also involves organ damage. If it damages heart and blood vessels, it will be cardiovascular syphilis. If brain and spinal cord are involved, this is neurosyphilis. Liver, joints, and testes are also affected. Tertiary syphilis also affects the eye, causing Auger Robertson pupil. Let's talk about the cardiovascular syphilis. It causes endarteritis. That is the inflammation in the small capillaries called vasa visorum that supply the large artery called aorta. An inflammation of aorta will lead to aortitis and aortic aneurysms. If you look at neurosyphilis, if it affects posterior spinal cord and the capillary supplying the posterior spinal cord has these parakeets in it, that will lead to tabes dorsalis. That is the wasting or loss of back of spinal cord. This will lead to loss of vibration sense and loss of proprioception. If it affects the anterior spinal cord, I mean capillaries supplying the anterior spinal cord contains these parakeets. This will lead to general paresis that involves the loss of sensation, weakness, and paralysis, often in the legs. If these parakeets are found in the capillaries supplying the brain, it will cause slurred speech, altered behavior, memory loss, difficulty coordinating muscle movements, and paralysis. If the treponema pallidum damaged the eye, it will be causing Auger Robertson pupil, which means that pupil loses its light reflex. That means that it doesn't constrict when there's too much light, but it does have its accommodation reflex. Now let's talk about the second type of syphilis, that is congenital syphilis. That results from transplacental transmission, either in uterus, during gestation, or while birth through vagina. Congenital syphilis also has two stages. Either the baby will be stillborn or will be dead in the womb. There will be macular papular rash on palms and soles. There will be optic neuritis if it affects the eyes of the baby. There will be snuffles. Snuffle means that nose is blocked by the increased secretions, which contain low of spirochetes. There will be organ damage, damage to liver and spleen, causing hepatitis splenomegaly. Late stage that occurs after two years of the birth, which includes saddle nose, that is bony destruction of the nose, sebaceous, which means the tibia bone will be bent, Hutchinson's teeth, which mean teeth develop notches, mulberry molars, frontal bossing, ragads. There will be hearing loss. Lab diagnosis will need sample from skin lesions, blood, fluid from chancres, and CSF. Then we'll go for microscopy and on gram staining this bacterium appears to be gram negative. And we'll also see the appearance of granuloma. If you want to diagnose acquired syphilis, we'll identify spirochetes and chancres using the dark field microscopy. In dark field microscopy, background will be dark but spirochetes will light up. To confirm the diagnosis of acquired syphilis, we'll go for serologic tests for antibodies against T. pallidum. If we want to diagnose congenital syphilis, then we'll go for non treponema serologic titer of mother and baby. The shape of treponema pallidum is spiral. It is 0.2 micrometer in diameter. The other non treponema tests that are used to identify acquired syphilis include rapid plasma Regan test, RPR, the venereal disease research laboratory test, the VDRL, that detects anticardiolipin antibodies the Regan. And if you look at treponemal tests, these are T pallidum particle agglutination, TPPA, fluorescent treponemal antibody absorbed, FDA, ABS. They detect antibodies that specifically target T pallidum. For congenital syphilis, as we've said, we'll go for non-treponemal serologic titer. We'll take CSF fluid 
for VDRL, cell count and protein. We'll also go for long bone x-ray, eye exam and hearing screen. And if you look at the treatment, penicillin will be used. And if you're giving penicillin, we should be cautious of looking at jarish hyrexima reaction. This is when T. pallidum dies and release a lot of antigens and the immune system gets overactivated, causing certain symptoms like fever, sweating, muscle and joint pain that usually last for hours and days. Prevention depends on early diagnosis and adequate treatment. Use of condoms, administration of antibiotics after suspected exposure, and serologic follow-up of infected individuals and their contacts. There is no vaccine against syphilis. To prevent congenital syphilis, all pregnant women should be screened by using a treponemal test such as FDA ABS. All right, everybody, this brings us to the end of today's video. The organism we discussed today is Treponema pallidum. It causes syphilis, both the echoid that contains primary, secondary, tertiary, or latent, and congenital syphilis. It is transmitted when a person gets into contact with the other person's skin lesions, through cuts and breaks, through sexual contact, and when the contaminated needles are used or person gets in contact with the lesion directly or from mother to baby. Hosts are humans and there's no animal reservoir. Diagnosis is based on microscopy, serologic tests, some treponemal and non-treponemal tests. For treatment, penicillin is used. And that's it for today's video. There was a lot to cover in today's video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. And if you want to connect with us on social media, we've got Instagram and Twitter, both with the handle Medzokro. And I'll see you soon in the next video. Till then, assalamu alaikum.